Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Storage Switzerland is an analyst firm focused on the storage, virtualization, and cloud marketplaces. Today we're going to continue our discussion on primary storage optimization, but now we're going to take a specific look at optimizing solid state storage. So in our last video, we talked about how in primary storage you have choices of thin provisioning, cloning, and space optimization techniques like deduplication. In the solid state version, we're going to really focus in on what people are doing to get to make solid state more efficient. Uh, so let's spend some time on that. So the, the first thing you'll notice is that is static placement. And that, that is, if you will, the old days of uh, doing uh, solid state storage. You go out, you buy X amount of capacity, you take your database, and you put your database on it, and you're done. Uh, you probably had really good intentions of making sure that uh, you were going to move data in and out of there and things like that. What we tend to find is whatever you bought the solid state storage for, that's the application that stays on it till the end of time. Uh, so what we want to do is, is use solid state storage a little bit more intelligently than that. And so the industry has come up with several techniques. The first of which is caching. And again, caching isn't anything new. Caching is moving the most active data into memory off of disk as it's being accessed. So if I have a server here and I'm accessing a uh, solid state disk device and then in behind that is my regular storage. As I'm accessing data, the, the SSD cache is keeping the most active data up here so that when I go to read more data, I'm pulling it out of cache instead of pulling it off of the slower hard drive. So what happens is I'm, these guys are constantly uh, talking and turning over data back and forth. The idea is you have more uh, data in memory and allow for the application to run quicker. The uh, problem with caching is, of course, that you might have what we call a cache miss, where if it isn't in cache, then you still have to go pull it from slow uh, hard disk storage. The other challenge is, is how does it get in between the, the server and the application, or the storage and the application? So that's another bit of a challenge. What some vendors have done, uh, not necessarily just to replace that idea, but it makes it easier for their system, is to do something called automatic tiering. So if you look at the legacy storage system today, We might have a tier of storage that's hard drives, and then a tier of storage that's SSD. And then the storage system itself has the intelligence to monitor what's being accessed, and then the, the most active data, it actually copies up to solid state. So that way it's always in solid state. Now what happens is that is interesting is these companies have developed uh, pretty sophisticated algorithms to make sure they're promoting the right thing. Uh, just because you have a, uh, a file that's being accessed doesn't need, means it needs to be on solid state storage. Like the latest copy of the company memo doesn't need to be coming off of expensive storage. What you want to put there is data that is being accessed and can justify being on this faster tier. So that's how automated tiering works. The challenge with it is most systems that we've seen today, when the, the server writes in new data, it always goes to hard drive first and then has to promote itself back up to solid state. So that, that algorithm has to run and it can take, we've seen it take at least hours and in some cases days for data to become hot enough, if you will, to be promoted up to solid state storage. The big challenge that both of these uh, techniques have is they have a very, very high turnover rate into the solid state storage area. Solid state storage, as you may know, uh, can only handle so many writes. Well, and, and those writes are based typically on the static placement model where you put data on there once, it changes uh, frequently but not all the time. Where auto tiering, we may be turning over the entire cache many times a day. The final optimization technique to look at is deduplication. 
Now, deduplication, of course, is popular in backup devices. We're starting to see it become more and more common in primary storage devices, as we discussed in our last video. And now we're really starting to see it apply to solid state storage. There's one simple reason for this. If solid state storage is depending on who you talk to, anywhere from 10x to 50x the price of hard drive storage, and the uh, process of deduplication can save you uh, or make that capacity more efficient, then the dollar's savings is also more significant. So it's a very interesting uh, technology to use. Now what deduplication does is it makes this SSD storage area essentially look bigger by removing redundant data. So again, just like we talked about in our last video, the redundancy level is gonna vary from customer to customer. But say, for example, in a VMware environment or a virtual desktop environment, that savings could be as much as uh, 7x gains in efficiency. And again, the way deduplication works is it identifies redundant segments within a file, compares those segments across all the files that it's storing, and only stores one copy of that segment. So a simple example is if you have 100 copies of a PowerPoint presentation, all with the same logo, then that logo is uh, eliminated from the 99 other copies and only stored one time. So therefore, making the uh, savings much, much more efficient. So what's the right way to go here? Well, uh, again, as we've said with other forms of uh, optimization, uh, we, we think throwing everything at it is the right way to go, but specifically deduplication has some intrinsic value in that if you think about what caching and automatic tiering do, is they try to get more out of less SSD. So what they're trying to do is take a lot less uh, expensive memory and use it as efficiently as possible by only storing the most active files. And that creates that turnover rate that we talked about. What deduplication does, kind of the opposite, deduplication makes the SSD area be able to store more data. So really it actually reduces the turnover rate by re removing redundant information. So it actually tries to get more out of the existing storage. Uh, so the combination uh, of these techniques could also be benefit in, in using them together. So in closing, deduplication on SSD will reduce the write cycle concern that we always have with solid state storage in that all of these, the caching and automatic tiering will actually increase the amount of writes that happen uh, to that tier typically. Deduplication, if it's done in line, for example, will eliminate the write before it ever occurs. So as a file comes in, if it's dissected and, so, and, and can be analyzed to see what components of that file have already been stored once, those writes don't have to happen again. So not only does it make the storage more efficient, it also reduces the amount of write cycles uh, that are going to the device in itself. So it makes the uh, lifetime expectancy of the drive more efficient. Also, by making the device look bigger and store more data, the chances of you having the data not on SSD and having to go to a hard drive uh, become lower as well. So once again, uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. I'd like to thank Permabit for sponsoring this video.